morning, great and mighty God, everlasting Father, how we commit ourselves into your hands again today, Lord of heaven, that you will yet teach and instruct us by your word, that you will enlighten us and impact us with the necessary grace in occupying our place correctly in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Living for Christ, part four. The first question I want to ask this morning is what do you think makes the life of Christ meaningful? Not just to us, but to the whole world today. What do you think? It is a very simple, straightforward answer. Somebody wants to answer me? You're all cracking your minds. There's, it's not Bible study class, don't worry, or exam. It is because he sowed his life as a seed. Amen? He said, no man take it from me. I gave it myself. He sowed what? His life as a seed. Amen? That is the very thing he did. And the question I'm asking you, how much of a seed is your life? Do you know what I mean by, you know, he gave himself for others. You get the point. He sowed his life as a seed for others. How much of a seed is your life? That is to say, how much of your life benefits others? Are you getting my picture? Apart from you, your wife, yourself, and you. How much of your life benefits others? How much of your life is given to others? Or we say benefits the kingdom of God. You get my point? How much of your life is a seed? You see, the secret is this. God only, God only blesses seed. Are you following me? It is what you do to impact others. What you do that you give to others. What you do that affects others. Are you seeing my hand? Beyond you that God blesses. What you do for yourself, you already have your reward. I don't know whether you are getting it because you have done it for yourself. It's not benefiting anybody. It's just for you. You did it to you. If you gave yourself money, the only thing you can say is thank you to yourself. Does that make sense? You get the picture now. It does. So there's not, if you do something for you, there is no thank you because you have it. But when you do for another, are you getting my picture? When you so into another's life, then you have a reward. Living for Christ. The reason why many of our Christianity has not been interesting and exciting is because we are not projecting it beyond ourselves. All we pray God do for me, my wife, God me, God my job, God this. Your life is much more than that. We've established that over the years. God ministered two things. It ministers seed to the sower and bread for your food. Bread you eat, seed you sow. And before you start thinking of your money, I'm not, just, I'm not talking of money, I'm talking of whatever you do to help others. Are you following me? Whatever you do to promote others, whatever you do that benefit others, whatever you do for his kingdom, are you following me? Whatever you do beyond yourself. Somebody say, I don't care about that. It's my life. I have to face my life. That is just for yourself. It carries no benefit. Amen? I said amen. Like I said, seed is not only in material, but it's also in your lifestyle. You have some people, they always go out to help others. You know that. You've seen such. And you have some people, they help nobody. You get my point? So, Jesus became so relevant to the whole world today because he sowed his life as a seed. In fact, he said it in John, except the corn of it falls into the ground and die, it abides alone. If a seed, until a seed goes into the ground and die, it's just one grain, right? But when it goes into the ground, dies, it brings forth much fruit. Glory to God. Come with me to that same passage in John chapter 12 from verse 24. John chapter 12 from verse 24. The big question is, is 
your life impacting anyone as a child of God? Is your life impacting anywhere as a child of God? Remember, you are the salt of the earth, right? And you are the light of the world. Salt does not do anything to itself. It preserves something else. Light enlightens the environment. Are you following? So there is what God expects of you, of your life, to impact others. Amen? And to impact where you are. So the question is, is your life impacting anyone else? Particularly for the kingdom of God. Is your life a benefit to somebody else? Does your life flow out as rivers of living water that Jesus said? You know, he said he that believed in me, out of his belly shall do what? Flow out. Not flow in. Do what? Flow out as rivers of living water to benefit others. So when you are not benefiting others, you are not really living for him. John chapter 12, verse 24. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat falls into the ground, a seed, right, and dies, it abides alone. But if it does, it ultimately brings forth much fruit. Now, he explained it further in verse 25. He that loveth his life shall lose it. Is it getting clearer now? If all you are doing is just me, 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 me. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hated his life in this world shall keep it. The word hated doesn't mean you despise your life. It means you sacrifice your life for others. Are you following me? Now look at verse 26 to make it clearer. He now said, if any man serve me, you know, when you are doing for others, you are in service of others. You get the picture now. So all that he's talking about, you sowing your life as seed, is being in his service. He that serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Go ahead, just go ahead. I will not let you alone. Yes, and they can tell me the work. I call me to be chant. Caralich, be bit more gin, bizu, freta, feralich. Nefsun yemiwed yata fatal. Nefsun bazi alem yemitala. Lazel alem hiwat yita bikatal. Yemiagale glen binor, yikatalin. And in balo pet agal guide the mobazia, yonal. Yemiagale glen yem binor, abia cabron. Are you following the sequence? In summary, the Lord Jesus Christ does not want you to live unto yourself. Is that clear? Your life is to be sown as a seed into others, particularly into his service. He that serve me, him my father will honor. Because it is only your service that brings his blessings. You remember in Exodus 23, he said it very clearly from verse 25. Ye shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless. What connects you with his blessing is your service. You shall serve, you can read it if you are there, read 25 and 26. You shall serve the Lord and God will bless. I'm like a chinam examiner, Tamil Kutan Lachu, Ersum Helena Wuhan Yibarakan. Bashitanam Kamaka Kalachu, Arik Ayarka, Bermudan Makanum Yemitch and Gifatunum, Yezamanim Kutter Emolalo. As long as you are engaged in his service, his benefits run your way. You shall serve the Lord, he will bless. He will bless your bread, he will bless your water, he will remove sickness away from you, he will do this to you. Why? Because you are not living unto yourself. When you are living unto yourself, you are on your own. If you are in a service, you know, it's like when you gain employment, they give you the benefits that goes with your job. 
if you are doing your job, not if you are not doing your job and you want to claim the benefits. Huh? <laughs> if you are not doing your job, you want to claim the benefit, they say, excuse me, they are looking for you in the next building. You don't belong here. But as long as you are doing your job, the benefits flows. Right? That's what he's saying. Healing is part of the benefits of service. Fruitfulness is part of the benefits of service. As long as you are engaged in his service, the benefits keep flowing. And serving God means you are representing here, him here on earth. You are doing something for him. Amen? Look at him. You are doing something for him. Amen? The Bible says, a faithful ambassador, Proverbs 13 verse 17. A faithful ambassador. Who is an ambassador? Somebody representing your interest somewhere. He said a faithful ambassador is health. So as long as you go down here, he is in heaven, you are down here on earth, and representing his interest and the interest of his heavenly kingdom here on earth, your health is guaranteed. The truth is, God did not just save you to make heaven. I've established that. But much more to serve him here on earth. Amen? To serve him. You remember one of the greatest stories of the Bible was the story of Moses. Amen? How many of us know the story of Moses? I know you are all Bible scholars. God called Moses and many times in the book of Exodus, he repeated it. Let my people go that they may serve me. Pure and simple. Not just let my people go so that they can enjoy their freedom. No. Let my people go that what? They may serve me. And it was repeated over and over and over. And I will always put it this way. When Israel was ready to serve him, he enforced their freedom. Are you getting the picture? When you are engaged in his service, he will see to it that you have the liberty, the freedom to do it. Jesus is Lord. I say Jesus is Lord. It is a service in the kingdom that guarantees you enjoying the blessings of God. If you want to truly enjoy his blessings, serve him. Use, if you want to enjoy health in this body, use this body to serve him. It will keep meant. Just like your car. Will you play with service in your car? You know what will happen? It will ground you. But because you need it to keep serving you, you too will service it. You get the picture? You too will take care of it. The money you don't want to give anybody, when there is something to be done on your car, you quickly go fix it and pay the money. Why? It's serving you. You get the picture? Though I, I was outside there, some of you should not, never park your car beside me again because they are very dirty. You need to wash your cars for God's sake. Any one of you who want to park beside my car, make sure your car is sparkling clean. I don't care whether there is snow or no snow. Eh? Look at all of you now. Jesus is Lord. Amen? How do we serve him? Because we need to understand this also. How do we serve him? Or if I throw it to you, how do you serve him? Somebody, some people think, you know, Oh, and, and by reference, some transfer it to men of God. That, no, they are okay. They are the ones that should take care of us. We don't take care of them. That God is already almighty, right? He has everything. So what is my own? What can I do for him? Huh? That's how some people think. God takes care of his own. God does everything. So they come to church, sing three songs, hear the message, drop offering if they remember, and then go about their lives. So are you following many one? In fact, you read some scripture, God say. I don't need anything from you. If I'm hungry, I won't even tell you. You've read that before. The cattle upon a thousand years, they are mine. So, how do we really serve him? We need to ask that question. The first thing I want to say to you, serving God is not just an act. It's not everything you do for him that he even accepts. Except it is done right. It is done with the right spirit. 
you know, Corinthians tell us, don't go there, I'd rather to go there. First Corinthians 13. He said, even if I give my whole body to be burnt without love, it is zero. You understand that now? If I give everything, build 20 churches, but without love, it's zero. Because you see, God is not a beggar. And God is never in need. So whatever you want to do for him, first and foremost, must be done because you love him.